on the 18th of November 1992, myself and 29 other people from the North East Forest Alliance, non-violent activists, occupied the headquarters of the Forest Commission of New South Wales in Pennant Hills. Later that afternoon, in the safety of the New South Wales Parliament, behind the parliamentary privilege, uh, all sorts of outrageous claims about our conduct were made. Why don't you judge for yourself about what we did? Uh, the action took place uh, at uh, 7.15 in the morning approximately. We'd been actually uh, doing reconnaissance on the building for several days beforehand. We'd managed to work out uh, a basic floor plan uh, how the security system worked and the exact time at which the overnight security system shut down the building was opened up in the morning. Our aim was to enter the building when there was the least number of people in there possible. Yeah, we'd gathered at the bowling club about an hour before the action to get ready. There would have been four or five cars there, a group of people. We loaded into the individual cars and then the land driver and another car went to the forestry building. Indicate. Always remember to indicate when you're going to storm forest open. It was only a short drive, like you know, two minutes through thick traffic down a side street, and um, it was on. We were just the, the plan was, was once we got onto the ramp, just go for it. Just drive to the security boom gate. The grill was up, so just go to the boom gate, confront the one guard, get out of the car, and just be very audacious about it. While the NIFA activists were entering the building via the stairwell. Uh, several people used the lifts to travel to the sixth floor which we occupied. Fortunately there were a group of pop plants there who wanted to cooperate and those pop plants helped capture the lifts on the sixth floor. Heather, can you please tell for some, somebody that security that there are people here, some greenies are walking around Hans's office and everywhere. Yes! <laughs> well we've done it. We're here. The People's Commission for the Forest is now in session. You're welcome to leave the building, but if you choose to stay, you're welcome to stay. On behalf of the People's Forestry Commission of New South Wales, you're invited to have the day off. If you choose to stay, you choose to stay. I do not recognise you uh, as being acting legally. Mm -hmm. Would you like to stay here with us or would you like to leave? I am here at work. You people are trespassing. So you choose to stay? We've asked you to leave. At the moment. While we were on the Commission's premises, we offered the Forestry Commission's staff the opportunity of continuing to work uh, as they liked, or the opportunity to leave. No one was held prisoner. When uh, people decided that they wanted to stay on the floors and didn't want to take the option of leaving, the doors were secured. Fortunately, the ground floor, which was Rodney's team to go into the foyer, had just made it in the nick of time. They, they actually got off on the main Pennant Hills Road and sort of walked down. In the end, it was Rodney actually having to just physically put his body between the two sliding glass doors at the front and holding it open. and. Um, the people that were in his crew had to end up running across the sort of tarmac in front of the building and just squeezing through the foyer door. And throughout the four hours of the action, we were never aware of what had happened in the foyer because we didn't have any communications. But um, we sort of realised just before they were coming to get us that they were going through the business of getting the foyer crew out. So we're pretty wrapped about that. The foyer had held the whole time. There's a piece of paper I've just pushed under the door which explains the whole... Um, then tell me all about it. Yeah, no problems. Have a good day. First phone call we got was from Ned about well, a quarter to seven. He rang up and said they were out at the uh, office and they were about to prepare to enter the building. What seemed like about two minutes later, John Corkill rang back and said, I'm actually in the commissioner's chair. Uh, inside the building, uh, we have the NIFA crew milling around. Coffee's being made. We've established some friendly relationships with staff uh, from the commission here. Others are uh, very disturbed and we're attempting to reassure them that we uh, mean no uh, violence uh, no threat or intimidation to them. This is a political action against the Commission. Here's has got a very nice chair. <laughs> it is still a confrontationist agency that wants to log endangered species no matter what. 
It is still an agency that cannot comply with law. It is still an agency that is running at massive multi-million dollar losses. And we are taking this action to throw a stark spotlight on what is going on and has been going on for the Commission for far too long. Your reserves no, are not, inadequate. I've already made a lot of your reserves are inadequate. Okay. No, the fire regime. Happening. How can you the say fire that regime is at the moment? There's no assessment happening at the moment. There is. The Forestry Commission is on the floor. Can't, can't see all the contracts being given their quality assessment. So you, you are following the resource assessment. Go with Dave Yes. You're following the resource assessment commission. We were following parts, but I don't know which parts you're asking about. Right. The scene on the sixth floor at the moment, there are people outside uh, abseiling down the building uh, attempting to hang a banner which reads, under new management. As soon as we got access to the top of the roof, I went to the side of the building with um, the other climber and the two people who are going to give us support for the climb. We tied onto the top of the roof, put our equipment on, connected the banner to the side to the side of my body and then proceed to hop over the side of the building. The building was quite square, very sharp edges, so it was difficult initially to get over the building, but when we got over the building, got over the edge, and abseiled down about two floors, abseiled down two floors, and we got to a position that we thought which would be good from a distance, about halfway of the distance of the building. Proceeded to um, let go of my harness. Oh, we're, we're, we're calling ourselves the uh, People's Commission for Forests. There's, a, there's a, a banner hanging off the roof that says um, Under New Management, a huge banner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've seen that one. And um, we, we're faxing out our, the new forestry charter out to all the regional offices. I'm faxing all the uh, officers of the Forestry Commission for the uh, emergency forest measures announced by their new People's Commission for us. Plus I'm giving them a message how we feel about the Boral Company and how they're buggering our old growth forests. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> the aim of the action was to draw the public's attention to the illegal and immoral way in which the Commission's operating and to institute the People's Commission for the Forest as an interim measure to draw attention to the need to have a new forestry management body which is representative of the public, representative of the different uh, people with with an interest, such as environmentalists, aboriginals, the industry, unions, uh, and scientists. We have, within our consultants, and we've demonstrated this through the court action so far to date, enormous expertise. And we think that there is uh, a great deal of expertise uh, out there in the broader community. The Australian Museum, the Aboriginal Lands Councils, the, uh, the industry itself, the unions, the Labor Council, all these people ought to be, all these agencies ought to be represented on a forestry management board and bring their expertise to bear. As an officer of the Forestry Commission, yes. I declare this building closed and I order you to leave. As the new acting People's Commission for I the Forestry I refuse to person, acknowledge your, your authority. We refuse I, to acknowledge your authority. I, I, declare, I declare this building closed Charlie, well, I, don't have you, a, I don't have, I a, I don't have authority leave, and, and this office I has to be closed, to leave. I decline. The morning of the Sydney Forestry Commission Head Office takeover, we were installed at the bunker at the Nature Conservation Council and we had to spend the next six hours there manning the telephones and uh, trying to liaise with the media about what was happening out of the action at Pennant Hills. I actually personally didn't enter the building, I was on the outside, there was about uh, 15 protesters outside. My particular job was police and media liaison and uh, that was quite commanding. There was uh, a beehive of police activity and uh, a swarm of media occurring from about uh, 8.30 onwards. Then about 8.30 the phones just lit up and there was media ringing up wanting to know what was going on 
how to get to the head office and uh, just trying to speak to the people who are actually in the building. So um, what we were involved doing was telling those people how to get to the Penal Hills, giving them short grabs for the radio and um, getting the uh, media informed about what was going on. The Commission has been wildly out of line. It has continued to break laws and yesterday we discovered that the Heritage Act has been and is still being breached by the Forestry Commission despite the fact that it was passed in 1977. So some nearly 15 years later, the Commission is still in breach of one of the major laws and of course this was one of the laws in the, in the Natural Resources Package which they were attempting to amend to get out from their legal obligations to protect heritage. There are no Aboriginal sites in state forests. You haven't listed, you haven't listed any Aboriginal sites in state forests. As, at all. As, as being, yeah, in the state, as being worthy of heritage. So, so if you're so keen to um, to get these on the national estate, why are you um, destroying them? There was we, a site, we're not destroying them. What about what about the site of Bar Eagle? There was a, there was um, there was a site of Bar Eagle that was destroyed uh, two weeks ago for the sake of eight trees. I don't I don't know about that site. The sites we have on registers and the sites that we have registered with the National Park Service, um, we do uh, preserve. No. Uh, we're in a position where the Commission is continuing to act illegally and continuing to destroy our old growth forests illegally. They're currently in breach of the Heritage Act because they haven't registered Aboriginal sites under their control. They're currently in breach of the Freedom of Information Act. We've been seeking information to which we have a right for the last 18 months and the Commission has not supplied that. We are also uh, involved in complaints to the Ombudsman's Office that the Commission has misled the Parliament and that the Minister has misled the Parliament in false job loss claims in the lead up to the Timber Industry Protection Act debates. So we've got basically four years of frustration of cabinet backsliding after clear court decisions and of illegal logging and the destruction of our old growth forests. How would I cooperate? Well, you could have left when we asked you to leave. Now, you're in a situation of your own making now. So you're holding me down? No, no. no. If you want to leave, we'll let you out. We'll let you out. I want to leave when there's police officers outside the door. Well, that's all right. We'll let you go then. Your choice of when you but leave is your choice. We offer you access to leave at any time. We've okay. done so repeatedly since we uh, arrived. Isn't that right? That is right. We've done so repeatedly since we arrived. And I wanted to stay in what, what you were doing. Uh, because right. I believed your access, your, your offer is illegal. I mean, there's no way. It's redundant. It's stupid. No, we, we, How can we, you offer me to uh, leave when you don't have the right to offer me anything? I have asked you to leave the building. I've closed this this part of the building and asked you to leave. Yeah, we know that. You are illegal. We know that. And you are you are asking me to leave. That's wrong, sir. Public accountability. Wide open and no Compliance you, you, you're law. sitting at the commissioner's desk. Why don't you look at the, a copy of the uh, corporate plan and see what we've said? Oh, we we look, wish to we've have seen the corporate. Public we've seen the corporate plan. We've been through the public and participation we, process that the commissioner and runs. We want abroad. full environmental assessment. You've got a photo call, Charlie. Have I? Yeah, in the end corner down that room. Seriously, you do, SCB. Okay. I'll, <laughs> I will talk to you later. Yes, today, okay. is it? Yeah. Is it, did I ask for Charlie or did mm -hmm. I ask for. Yeah, that's good. In the left-hand corner. Claudia. Is, uh, is around as usual. Uh, you want to confirm it? I'll go and look at his uh, diary if you like. Okay, just hang on. I'm, I'm not sure where he keeps his diary. He's only been here for two weeks. So I'm not sure. Just hang on. Uh, we are prepared to be here for as long as it takes. Crucial thing now is what will the Premier, what will the Minister do? 
Will they now take the steps to drag the Commission oh, into, the, into the 1990s, oh, yeah. or are they going to uh, mess about as they've messed about in the past? We have to have decisive action for the politicians to take the steps that have been recommended by the Public Accounts Committee, by the Resource Assessment Commission, by the Ombudsman, by the Heritage Act, by the Freedom of Information Act. That's what we need. Not more lies, not more obfuscation, not more vested interests. That seemed to be going quite well, except for about oh, two hours later, the media started ringing us up and saying, what's this about hostages? Now, we knew nothing about hostages. The people inside the building uh, from NEFA knew nothing about hostages. And this whole uh, scare campaign started to, to be presented in the media. And um, it was just an impossible situation to control because the media had hold of this idea that there were people being held captive inside a building. And they ran with it. They didn't care whether the Forestry Commission were telling lies or whether we'd actually told them that this was a non-violent action, there was going to be no damage or anything like that. Totally illegally. And in fact, I believe that you are by, well, we by barring us exit, entry and exit rights. It's cool you, you calling are, back. You are acting. Uh, Tracy, please. In, in fact, you're, 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 I, I believe you're very close to uh, holding us hostage. Well, we, we don't um, want to hold you hostage. We are. You've asked been you to leave. Pardon, I'm working here legally and, and properly. You should not. Keep asking to leave, please. Yeah, please. Come and over there. Stand next to him. Stand next to him. Do you want to? Evidence, mate. I ask you to leave this building now of your own free will. We're not barring your exit. If you wish to leave, please leave. We would like you to leave the building. Yes. You're no longer required here. Yes. The best thing probably is for me to Have the day. I refuse to leave. Thank you. I refuse to leave my legal place in work. By about 11 o'clock, things were getting really hectic. Um, the police were on their way up to the office. Um, there were television cameras rolling out there, there were media arriving, there were, there were newspaper journalists looking for interviews with John, with virtually anyone who could uh, tell them what happened inside the building. At the same time, Forestry are also saying that we're holding people hostage, which is an absolute lie. They've chosen to work here and they can go out whenever they please. Um, also, they've said that we've ransacked the files. That's not true. The only thing I've ransacked is the chocolate biscuits. Okay. What's for breakfast, Vanessa? Cornflakes. was quite orderly. I uh, had a lot of uh, liaison with the inspector in charge, Inspector Collings, and uh, he was quite a reasonable sort of chap. And uh, when the commission was uh, claiming that there were hostages, that was when I went up with the commission to the sixth floor and uh, he gained access. Forestry Commission staff, guys. Uh, you went down this way. Inspector, Inspector Collins. John. All right, where's the Forestry Commission? I believe yeah, he's coming down now. He's this way. He's coming this way. And there's a lady in here. Yeah. Who is it? Um, who are you? All right. Diana, 
with you, we like to come out here. Uh, we did, we did. All right, look, let's not argue about that now. Would, would you like to come out outside? No, because then we'll get to my desk and I, I'm not getting anyone in. We can give you another take and begin with no equipment. <laughs> We're interfering with no personal things. No, like, like we need to do. We've, we've damaged nothing there. No, we've we've no, interfered with nothing there. I have signed on and this is my job. I'm going to stay. Okay, well, I'm quite happy with that. You're quite happy with that. Someone on Google 7 when I'm starting in. Yeah. Well, they, these people are staying on the premises by their own yes. free will. Is well, the security well, going to breach in there at all? Yes. Well, I don't know because they locked the doors after. I, I haven't been able to. They've used the, the phone in there. They've used the phone. Yeah, they've they've, they've, they've read, read things on hands and desk. They've taken faxes off the machines. They've uh, used the, uh, my coffee making facilities, not the Forestry Commission, mind you. That's my coffee that they've been and drunk beer from all their fridges and all sorts of things. I'm not leaving because I just can't trust Anyway, look, my major concern at the stage was for you two people. Uh, if you're quite happy to stay here, then you know, that's, that's okay. We're offering no threat to these people, Inspector. <laughs> We well, you're offering a threat to them by the mere fact that you're here, and you shouldn't be. Well, well, we have asked them. We did ask them to leave them initially. All right. Well, in fact, we tried to persuade them. Why should we leave when we go in here illegally? Yes, exactly. Well, patients now have reached a crisis point. We've had to precipitate the crisis because the commission keeps pretending that it can do illegal work and get away with it. As I say, that's that's not in my portfolio. No, all right. Well, looking I'm at it from right. my side. I've got a, be a, a, a premises that's been occupied legally right. as an inspector of police. I've got to do something right. about it. I certainly don't want to see anybody get injured in any All right. Well, no we sense. don't want any precipitate action. If you can, uh, if you can uh, be advised of our position, that's good. Uh, if you can seek further advice from within your I'm, command, I'm not going to seek any further advice. Any responsibility for the actions that do follow will be mine. I'm prepared to make that decision, and as I've told you, it will be carried out fairly rapidly. All right. Uh, we Again, you've had the opportunity, and this is an unofficial conversation, as far as I'm concerned. Yes. Let, me out. Let the inspector out, please. Stand back, please. Yeah. Did you give me a tape? You can't give me a tape. It's already gone. It's gone. It's gone away. Yeah. yeah. It's ABC gone. Yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah. See you. See you. No, wrong one. Wrong one. Wrong one. Need the two boards up. Need the two boards up. They are happy that we're not holding people hostage. They've told us that we're holding dueling illegally, which I think is patently obvious. Uh, they say that they will break in and arrest us uh, after they give us a formal request to leave the building. They've asked us to walk out, be arrested and go through it easy, or else they say they will come in and they will arrest us and he doesn't want to see anybody hurt but he can't say what's going to happen. Mm. And that's the yeah, highest yeah. they've ever heard it. Yeah. Can we get that on tape what, when you said that? Okay, I'll get this out now. No, you can get out. We're going to arrest you, but you'll you'll will do it peacefully. And they said if you decide to lock yourselves in, we can't guarantee a peaceful arrest, and we can't guarantee that no one's going to get hurt. Well, no, there won't be resist arrest. But uh, I'm speaking to you, chained to the commissioner's desk. They'll have to cut me and others out. They may have to cut their way in. Now, plainly, the situation could be avoided. If that, you know, for years today, we could have avoided this situation if the ministers, Gary West and Ian Corsby before them, or Premier Nick Griner or Premier Fate had made the hard decisions. If they'd pulled the commission to line and said, you'll act lawfully. So, uh, you know, this is the situation. We'd much rather have a negotiated situation to have a win-win situation where we could have real public management for public interest and where we could uh, uh, step back and pass uh, power to a representative forest management board. We see our uh, role here as being a strictly interim one, but we must force the current illegal uh, managers of the Commission out of office, and we've succeeded in doing so, and uh, we hope we'll be able to defend our position throughout the day. Well, that's right. We're now, we've got to decide what we're going to do. Just Are tell we going to me what the group's doing. No, no. no. Right. So, if we're going to defend ourselves as they try and come in, where do we actually retreat to? Yeah. Here we go. Here we go.
The police finally got to the door. At that stage, we realised that um, the ground floor had been captured and the sixth floor had just fallen. So the police had access to um, the part of the Fire Street Commission building. So we just, our, the van had been up there at that time for about three hours, three and a half, four hours. So we decided that we were going to let the police in at that time because we didn't want to cause any damage to the forestry building. So the police came to the roof door and we peacefully let them in, undid the locks on the door and let them through to the top. And at that, that point they proceeded to arrest us, um, charge us with entering upon enclosed lands. Hey, Yana. Oh, yeah. 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 Thought you wanted us to come out. <laughs> yes, I thought you wanted us to come out. Otherwise, directed. Okay. One at a time. <laughs> right, you first. Well, uh, you're under arrest for being trespassing on Forest Republic. Same with you. You're under arrest for arresting trespassing. Next one. Whoa, whoa. Well, once. Once they got through the door, they ended up um, bringing us out one by one, photographed, um, being photographed by the police and the Forestry Commission. And then they led us down the stairs and basically checked our pockets and what we had and, and then put us in the paddy wagon. Um, we drove off to Hornsby. Midday, it was um, pretty well over. People were heading back to the police station, but nevertheless, the media hype was still going full stream. Uh, and there were worse and worse accusations coming out being uh, made about our action by the Commission. They were alleging that we were you know, damaging equipment, we'd ripping phones out of walls, all sorts of ridiculous things that they were blowing out of proportion so that they didn't have to deal with the issues of what we were talking about. So, so the uh, Commission really was quite guilty of deliberate lying. The Commission's response to the action was that it immediately began pumping out lies to the media about hostages, about damage, about assaults and all sorts of defamatory statements like that. Uh, I was responsible for talking to the media at the time. Uh, I explained to the media that it was a completely non-violent action, that no one would be hurt. Unfortunately, the Commission closed the gates and wouldn't allow the media in. And at the end of the uh, operation, after the police had chopped their way into the building, the Forestry Commission invited the media up to come and see the damage that the protesters had done. In fact, what they were doing was showing the, me the media the damage that the police had done gaining access, but they were claiming the protesters had done it. So uh, the Commission was really deliberately lying and misleading the media. The Commission says around 50 fax messages were sent during the occupation. It claims that commercially sensitive departmental and cabinet documents were taken and faxed by the demonstrators and caused damage estimated to total. It claims that Forestry Commission staff were assaulted and that the office was been a bomb threat damaged. evacuated. Well, um, somebody has threatened to blow up the building and the entire staff has been evacuated. And I'm ringing you from a... I suspect that it's the media's uh, prerogative to choose which side of the story they're going to believe and uh, which one is going to produce the better media coverage. And I suspect in a case like that they chose to run with the more sensational stuff and uh, put less weight in what was actually the truth. I must say, unfortunately, although I believe that most of the journalists knew the true situation, it seems that when the information got through to the editing rooms, the media preferred to run with the sensation rather than the truth. and. Uh, Quite a lot of inaccurate and, in some cases, defamatory reports came out that evening. Um, I think there's editorial control directed to increase the viewership, and I think there is certainly uh, policy directions given to the editor by the major shareholders about the activities of certain groups against uh, their invested interests. Um, uh, uh, in Australia, I think that's uh, it's nowhere, nowhere better shown with the amount of ownership or the minimal amount of ownership, um, especially the following interviews the next day after uh, the action where it, uh, quite a lot of footage was given to people who were on the inside uh, and also they took a lot of footage of what the issues were and what was being explained for and when that, that appeared on the news or the current affairs program that afternoon it had been so severely edited it, 
it virtually made us admit what was uh, being alleged against us and what was blatantly false. And to my mind, that was obviously a combination of both editor and um, the owners coming down and deciding to squeeze NIFA uh, out. After the People's Commission for Forest Action, we realised that we hadn't got the media coverage of the reasons and the history that had brought us to this historic action. We've been campaigning since the 1980s to protect important areas from the Forestry Commission's ravages. And in 1988, the ALP went to election in New South Wales, offering to do something if it were re-elected. Well, they were tipped out of office, largely because of the South East. And in 1988, when Ian Causley became the minister, the situation became very much worse. The Forestry Commission uh, sought first to be exempted from the planning law through a special bill of parliament. That was overturned and uh, in the next year, 1989, the commission moved into high gear. They attacked North Washpool and a blockade there by NIFA stopped the commission. Later in 1990, we began our court actions against the Forestry Commission. First of all, over Mount Royal area uh, in uh, the Upper Hunter er uh, catchment. That beautiful old growth forest had already had the bulldozers ripping and carving. We went to court, the court ruled an EIS should have been done, it hadn't been done, and the court ordered a stop. In March 1990, we discovered that the Forest Commission was building a road in the Chalundi State Forest. Again, we went to the blockade, again we forced a stop in work, and again there were arrests made of NEFA, arrest, of NEFA protesters. When we got to court, the Forestry Commission admitted to the Land Environment Court that it should have done an environmental impact statement and that it would now do one. Interestingly, the local courts and the district courts threw out charges against the protesters because the courts had found that it was NEFA that was upholding the law and the commission that was breaking it. That same year, we'd forced the Minister, Mr Causley, and the Premier, Mr Griner, to deny in Parliament that they would force the Commission to act in law. But later, in June 1990, the Forestry Commission was surprised to have the Premier announce that environmental impact statements would be prepared for 14 old growth forest areas on the north coast. But perhaps they were delighted to find that logging would continue in old growth forest areas while these environmental impact statements were prepared. It was business as usual, although now they would start to look. It was later that year that we had to stop the Forestry Commission again in the North Washpool area and we prepared to challenge the Washpool environmental impact statement written in the 1980s. We went to court, the evidence was all in our favour and the Commission went down in a screaming heap. The Commission found that the Forestry Commission couldn't be trusted to do the right thing in North Washpool. So in 1991 we had yet another year of skirmishes and battles. In that election year, we had uh, a promise made to us by Gary West that he would investigate 10 years of illegal action in North Washpool and that there would be an inquiry. And yet, after that, uh, that election, he reneged. There's been no inquiry, perhaps there was never an intention to hold one. In 1991, we asked the Commission not to go into the Chalundi State Forest. It went in. And the history of the blockade of Chalundi and the successful court actions will be told elsewhere. But uh, what we were able to prove once again that it was the North East Forest Alliance upholding the law and the Forestry Commission backed by the New South Wales Police who were breaking the law. By the end of 1991, we had won three court actions over Chalundi and we'd had the New South Wales Parliament throw out a regulation made to overturn the effect of the Chalundi court judgments. In December 1991, the Parliament passed the Endangered Fauna Interim Protection Act, which then protected endangered species in a way that they'd never been protected from forest activities before. And the National Parks and Wildlife Service now had power to influence the way and whether the Forestry Commission logged the habitat of endangered species. But that breakthrough didn't last very long. 
In February 1992, the Forestry Commission contrived a timber supply crisis in Kempsey and blamed the Endangered Fauna Act for drying up timber supplies. We now know that it was the Commission itself in its inaccurate forecasts of available timber supplies that had created the crisis in Kempsey and the Endangered Fauna Act was only a convenient excuse to have an important pro-forestry bill passed through the Parliament. In 1992, we challenged the Forestry Commission in the Killacranky uh, district in the Oak State Forest in the Bellingen River's upper catchment. Massive landslips had produced major soil erosion and pollution of the pristine Bellingen River catchment. That case is yet to go to court, but the evidence that's been compiled shows that the road should never have been constructed. From there, the North East Forest Alliance moved its campaign focus to the uh, Mummel Gulf area and to an important part of uh, the old growth forests on the Tableland. That battle through the freezing winter of, uh, of uh, 1992 was won when we kept the commission out of those areas and no old growth forest logging occurred there. Soon after the wrap up at the Mummel, Sta Mummel Gulf area, NEFA moved its attention to the Karai State Forest on the northern boundary of the Werakimbi Wilderness nomination. And on two different occasions, there were spirited defences of that wilderness area from the Commission's activities. The Commission finally was forced to withdraw because of the actions of the National Parks and Wildlife Service to protect endangered species particularly the highly suspected uh, uh, animal, the eastern quoll, previously thought to be extinct on mainland Australia. It had been sighted there recently. So by uh, spring 1992, the North East Forest Alliance was sick of fighting the Forestry Commission on a state forest by state forest basis. But we hadn't realised on their resource security proposal to give guaranteed access to forests uh, to the timber industry at rock bottom prices and packaged together with uh, resource security legislation were a range of other draft laws proposing to give natural resources management to the Forestry Commission in such a way that they could log where they liked. Well with Aboriginal people, with environmentalists from across the state, the North East Forest Alliance campaigned successfully to have that natural resources package affecting heritage, affecting planning, affecting environmental impact statements and affecting endangered species thrown out of the Parliament. Two days after that we discovered that the Forestry Commission had a new proposal for resource security legislation. We discovered that they had not been complying with the Heritage Act and so now sick to the back teeth of inaction by the Minister, by the Parliament and by the Premier the North East Forest Alliance said it was time for the People's Commission for Forest. And on the 18th of November 1992, the North East Forest Alliance set up the People's Commission for Forest to protect old growth forest and to achieve lawful public interest forest management. Questions of fact. You must allow me, me, us, me, us, us. Either Mr West repeats his claims outside the house. Has the gall? Well, he well he either he either withdraws his okay. his allegations, comes out and says them outside the house, or he's gutless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If he wants to talk about law and order, that's exactly what we want. Mm -hmm. We're prepared to be called for remaining on enclosed lands. As long as the Commission is called for the Heritage Act, the EPA, the PAC, the RSN, yeah, and the yeah. 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 NEPA has the courage of its convictions. Does Mr West have the guts? Yesterday was just amazing, you know, there was helicopters and police and, you know, like, like, boom, the, the tribe went in at seven.
went straight in under the building, went straight up, three, three lifts straight to the sixth floor, locked the lifts. We had specially made devices which shut the doors on fourth floor and sixth floor. The other crew went straight in on the roof and <coughs> abseiled out over the roof, abseiled out and put up this huge banner under new management. And then Corkle set himself up in the office of the Commissioner of Forest, chained to the desk, called himself the new Commissioner and went for it. We've changed the last paragraph. It now reads, if Minister West has a shred of evidence on these allegations, he must go to the police. We have co fully cooperated with the police, so must he. Mr West is prepared to shout allegations and sit as judge and jury in the Parliament. He must repeat these claims outside the House and allow us the opportunity to challenge him in the court. Either Mr West withdraws these allegations, repeats them outside of the House, the privilege of the House, or he can shut up. Right? Neither has the courage of its convictions. Does Mr West have the guts to step outside? Shut up. Close it up. Close it up. Close it up. Oh, we're going to the door. Oh, wow. I've been locked out. You're quite welcome to talk, talk to John Corkill if you leave a phone number on that piece of paper. I want to know about direct action. Okay, the district forest at the Karai State Forest has been full on into it. You know that American guy? Yes. So this is the, the last defence of um, the PCF, is it? PCF, People's Commission for the Forest. Really?